Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this tutorial we're going to look at pivot charts. So we've previously looked at uh, pivot tables what allow us to quickly summarize data but what pivot charts allow us to do is go one step further and also have that information uh, visualized into a chart of our choosing. So what we're going to do for this example is we've got two sheets, uh, so we've got data, what will look very familiar to anyone who's looked at one of our recent tutorials. Uh, and obviously if you haven't watched our recent tutorials, do make sure you are watching the previous videos because they do tie together and there's some real insightful knowledge in each of one of those and like I say, we gradually build upon it with each video. So the data might look familiar to you here, but obviously it served a great purpose for this demonstration. So what we're going to do is pull through our chart into this uh, sheet titled Pivot Chart. All I'm going to do is select in cell uh, A1, uh, as this will be the start, we're going to insert our chart. All we need to do is go onto our Insert tab and then come across to the middle in our example here, or it might be in a slightly different location, depending on what version of Excel you're using. But the option we want to look for is Pivot Chart, and once it's found, just select uh, that button. First thing we'll be asked, just with normal pivot tables, is to provide the table or range. So all I want to do in here is just uh, select all the data that we have in columns A to C of our data sheet. So that's got all our data there. Select OK. And then as we can see, the other um, entry point is obviously where to put the pivot chart. But we've already predefined um, pre where we're going to do this. It's going to be in the pivot chart sheet, as you can see at the beginning here, and in the cell A1. So once selected, all we do is hit OK. And we can see we've got our pivot table in cells A to C. And we've also got a, a blank canvas for our chart. So what we need to do is drag down, uh, for our example here, our date field into the axis category down the bottom left. And you can see as soon as we've done that, it created our months field in this table here. So we previously only had the three options here, but we've now got the months one as well. So because we've got months, and this is what we want to summarize by, all we need to do is deselect the date and we're left with just the month. As you'll see in column A, uh, we have a less than the 1st of the 1st, 2019. And the reason we have that is because we selected the whole columns uh, to pick up all data or any new data that's added to those columns in the data sheet. And obviously there's going to be a number of blank, uh, blank cells uh, by selecting the whole column as we only went down to, I believe, 200, row 230 in our data. All we're going to do is just do a real quick filter, simple filter, just to exclude all those. So it basically means that uh, if it doesn't contain any data, it's going to be excluded from our summary. So this is more what we should expect to see. And you can see that filter has been reflected here in the months section of the, um, the canvas for our chart. Once we've obviously done that, we're happy with our months. The other bit we're going to do is just bring in the number of sales into our values. And by default, that would put it as a sum. So we can now see we have two pieces of information to look at. We've got our pivot table in cells uh, columns A to B, and you can see what that total number is by month with the total at the bottom. And we've also got our chart nicely populated for us as well. So we can see uh, how all that information looks over those numbers. The real benefit of using the chart is uh, even though you could cast your eye down column B to see the highest and lowest months, if that was something of interest, it's particularly easy to really see what the highs and lows are uh, by using the chart. So we can quickly see that June was uh, had the most number of sales and that August had the least. If you wanted just to make that a bit more clearer, all you need to do is right click on any one of the columns and you'll see that by default all of the other columns are selected as well. And then just from your options, go down to add data labels and you'll also get those numbers that are present on the pivot table supplied to you on the chart as well. One other little update, well there's two actually, but one couple of updates to make to the chart just to make it a bit more nice and tidy, is where you see we've got the sum of number of sales at the top here and the months filter. What we can do is just right click on one of those and then we're going to go down to here to do hide all field buttons on chart. All this does is remove those field buttons from the chart. It just gives it a bit more of a nicer feel and just tidies everything up a bit. The last thing I'm going to do is obviously the title. We're just going to quickly change that because obviously it helps to have an informative title so people know what they're looking at. So we're just going to call this number of sales by month. And you can see that that's been updated for us there. Um, just for reference, if we wanted to have value rather than sales or both, all we need to do is drag our total value, the other field we have, into our option here. 
and you can see that's updated for us as well. If we wanted to have data labels on that as well, so we can see the numbers, all we need to do is just do the right click on the orange columns as they appear here and just do uh, show data labels if required. And obviously we could just deselect the number of cells if we didn't want to have those and wanted to go with value instead. But we'll just get rid of value and keep our number of cells just so it's a bit tidier. And also if you click and drag, you can obviously move this as box or move the chart area any way you wish. And you can even hide it over the pivot table if you wanted to completely hide that from view. But we'll just leave it to the side there. So that makes it really useful for moving the chart around. So the key benefit of using your pivot tables in general and pivot charts as well is it's tied to your data dynamically. So if something in your data changes, then it will be updated into our chart here. And this is where you'll now see why we selected the whole columns that contained our data uh, for this very reason. So if we go into our data, well, if we look at our chart, we can see that August had the least number of sales. So it had 136. So what we're going to do is just go into our data sheet and just go to the bottom of our data. So row 230. So we've gone down to the bottom of our data. And what we'll just do is add another date. So we'll go the 18th of August. 2019 and this time we'll put into here a hundred sales in this month and let's say it was I don't know if that was 15 maybe six times let's just say it was 700 pounds in value was generated so we will just add that number into our data here so the key benefit as we then mentioned briefly is by selecting the whole columns uh, that the data is contained in our pivot table and chart will pick up any new values uh, or any new rows um, that are added to our data range. In order to update our pivot table and chart, all we need to do is go to our data tab and select the refresh all button. So as you can see, upon hitting refresh all, that number for August has now been updated. And that's because uh, obviously it's picked up that we've added a new row to our data. It's identified that the date for that is uh, in August. So it's then allocated that new value so the total of uh, 100 new sales has been added to August and therefore updated it into our chart. So we hope you found that tutorial useful and it gave you an introduction to something maybe you haven't used before being that uh, pivot charts. If you did enjoy the video please do give it a like uh, it would be greatly appreciated and it really does help us out. Also if you haven't already do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all of our new videos. In the description to this video, you'll find a couple of links, so Facebook and Instagram, and even our website, so great ways to get in contact with us, or alternatively, great ways also to be notified uh, of when new videos are coming out. Also in the description to this video, you'll find a link to Udemy. So Udemy is a provider of online training, and we have our very own course on there, which is the beginner to advanced user in Microsoft Excel. So if you'd like to check that out, by all means, just go to the description of this video, click that link, and you'll be directed straight to the course. So thank you very much for watching, and we shall see you in the next video.